Today, what we'll be building is this sweet HTML5 canvas where as I click down, drag my finger and let go, it's going to draw something on the actual canvas here. Now, this may seem a little bit silly, but we're actually going to learn a lot about how the fundamentals of canvas actually work, as well as a couple of other neat tricks along the way. So let's head on over to our JavaScript file here. And really all we have is this canvas element that we need to draw on. So first thing we want to do is grab that canvas. And the second thing that we need is something called a context. Canvas on the web is sort of like Microsoft Paint, where you just get a block of actual pixels and you need to then draw on that. Now you don't draw directly on the canvas element in HTML, but you draw on something called the context. And the context can either be 2D, which is what we'll be working with, although you can also use it with 3D for the stuff like video games and 3D rendering. So we're going to grab the context, const ctx equals canvas dot get context, and we've asked it for the 2D context. Next thing we need to do is size up our canvas to be the exact width of the window. By default, your canvas is going to be 800 pixels by 800 pixels because I've done it here. However, we want to resize it before we do any of our drawing. So we'll say canvas dot width is equal to window dot inner width. And we'll also do that with height. Then when I refresh this page, it should be as big as the actual window is. If I inspect element on my canvas element, you shouldn't see anything. But if you hover over it, you'll see mine's about 1700 by 1100 pixels. Then we need to do a couple of the base settings with the stroke style, the line cap, and the line join. And I'll explain these in just a second. Badass. And we need line join is going to be round. And the line cap is also going to be round. And when you draw on something, what is going to happen is there needs to be a color, first of all, and we're going to start with badass. And then also the end of the line, should it be squared off? And when a line meets another line, should it be squared off or should it be rounded around the corner? So we've done round and you can go up on MDN and look at all the different options for line join and line cap and play around with. Next, we need a couple dummy variables. So we're going to say let is drawing is equal to false. And what this is going to do is when I click down on this element, I'm clicking down, I just did it, and I move my mouse and then I let go and then I move my mouse again, nothing happens when I'm moving my mouse down. It only draws when my cursor is actually down. So what we're going to do is we're creating sort of like a flag right here where we set it to false. And then when you click down, we set it to true. And when you click up, you let go of the button, we're going to set it to false. And that's sort of just going to be our, our flag to tell us, should we actually draw to this canvas or is someone just moving their mouse without doing anything? Then we need a couple of variables. Let last x equals zero and last y is equal to zero. And last x and last y are going to help us out because when we draw to a canvas, let's say I have my mouse right here and I want to move it to right here. Let's imagine that was just one straight line. What needs to happen for you to draw a line is you need a starting X and Y and an ending X and Y. You can't just tell it draw a line at coordinates 100, 100, because it, how does it, a line needs a start and a stop, not just a start. So what we've done is we've created a last X and a last Y variable that's going to be where do you start the line from. And then when we finish drawing, that's going to be where do you end. Next up, we need a function called draw, and that's going to take in an event. That draw function is going to be called whenever I move my mouse on top of the canvas. So let's just console log that event, and we'll listen for our mouse move event on the canvas. So now when I move my mouse on the canvas, it's going to console log draw. And when I move around our mouse now, you're going to see that these events mouse events are being logged every time I move the mouse. And on those mouse events, we're going to see offset X, offset Y, movement X, movement Y, X and Y, where all this information about what happened, where was the mouse when this thing was fired. But again, we don't want this draw, this console log to run all the time. We want to only do it when the person has clicked down. So what we can do here is we'll say, if is if they are not drawing, then return. And this will stop the function from running 
when they are not most down. And then how do we change that is drawing? Well, we'll have another event listener here. So mouse down. And when the mouse is down, we're just going to run a quick arrow function in line here that says is drawing is equal to true. And when the mouse is up, is drawing is equal to false. And then a finally one, we want to listen for mouse out is drawing is also going to be false. Because what can happen is you can click down, let your mouse leave the actual window here and let go and come back. And it's still going to think that the mouse is down because you never triggered a mouse up on that event. So when you mouse out, it's going to automatically say, oh, you are no longer drawing. So with these variables being set here, we should only console log the event when my mouse is down. So refresh. Here we go. I'm moving my mouse around. Nothing's happening. I'm going to click and, and keep moving my mouse. Look at all these numbers are moving and I'm going to let go and move my mouse around. Nothing happening. Good. So that means this function, everything below this one line is only going to run when the user's mouse is actually down. So that's sort of our uh, click and drag functionality down pat. Now let's work on actually doing the drawing. So first thing we want to do here is start a path. So you say CTX. And remember, CTX is where we do all of our drawing for a canvas. So begin path. Then we need to start with an X and a Y, move it to an X and a Y, and that will complete our drawing of X. So we say CTX dot move to last X and last Y. And then we are going to line to E dot offset X and E dot offset Y. And again, those E dot offset X and offset Y, those values are coming from the actual event that happened here. And then finally, we call CTX dot stroke. So all of these lines right here, they've just been starting up our line but we're not going to actually see anything on the page until we call stroke. Now, that's not going to get us there, but let's see where we are so far. Whoa, what is going on here? Maybe you can understand what's going on here. We're drawing all of these. It's actually kind of cool. We're drawing all of these lines, but what's happening is we're always starting from. Maybe we'll put a comment. Start from and go to. We're going to always start from zero and go to wherever the user's mouse is actually moving, right? So what we want to do is when we're done this draw function, we want to update the last X and the last Y variables to be wherever they were. So we could say last X equals E dot offset X and last Y is E dot offset Y. Let's see if that does it for us. Ah, uh, working so far. Drag. Oh, no. A couple of things happening here. First of all, let me just show you a quick ESX trick. We could set both of these variables in one line where you say last X and last Y are equal to E dot offset X and E dot offset Y. That just allows us to do it in one single line. That's called destructuring an array. But we still have this problem. We got a couple of problems here. First of all, when I click down, my first drawing is still always going to start at zero, zero, and that doesn't really make much sense. And then the other thing is, is like when I continue to draw, it just starts off from where I was. So I just, I'm only able to draw one continuous line and nowhere in between. What we can do is go back to this mouse down here, this function, and maybe I'll move this to the top here, just have it out. And rather than just doing this one quick inline function, I'm going to make that into a block so I can do multiple things. So is drawing is true, but we also have to update our last X and our last Y the same as we've done here and pass the event. So what we're going to do is as soon as the person clicks their mouse down to start it before we do a mouse move, because mouse down will happen before we move our mouse, then we're going to update the last X and the last Y. And that's going to put us where we want to go rather than starting at zero and zero. So give that a save. Now I'm going to start here. Click. Ah, looks like it's actually working. Can I start another one? Good. Draw another line. Draw another line. Draw another line. Good. 
I'm really happy with that. Now, a couple other things. This these lines are really really small, so we could go up to our context here and say ctx dot line width is equal to 100, and that will give us a much. You see how the 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 end of the the caps are round. If I were to take this line join and line cap off, we just get the woo this kind of funky this going on here and if it was a line cap it's going to give us this nice smooth round one so that's the very basics of drawing on a canvas but let's have a little bit fun and do something like this let's first do the the color if you haven't heard of hsl i need to stop for just a second and explain it so head to the website mother effing hsl and what hsl is is it's essentially the rainbow but you can programmatically select pieces of the rainbow. So the hue part of HSL is from red all the way over to red on a rainbow. The S, which is a saturation, which is sort of like how bright it is. And L is going to be the lightness. And that's what you can change right here. Lightness all the way is white. The absence of lightness is going to be black. So somewhere in the middle is, is probably what you're looking for, maybe a little bit higher. And that's going to allow us to programmatically pick the different pieces of this. Now that's really cool because what we can do is if zero is red and 360 is the other spectrum, that means for every 360 draws that we do, we can just pick an incremental color and then flip it back. So what we're going to do is go back up to our initial variables and we're going to say let hue equals zero. And as we draw, before we begin the path, we'll say ctx dot stroke style. Remember, we started with badass, but now we're going to be setting it to be HSL. And the hue is going to be the variable hue. And then we're going to give it 100% saturation and 50% lightness. So let's start. Let's see where we, we get so far. Okay, so it's starting at zero, which is red. Good. But we could also, once we've done that stroke style, or maybe at the end of it here, we say hue plus plus. And that will just increment it. So the second time we draw, it will be one. Third time, it will be two. Woo! Okay, looking good, looking good. Uh, and eventually, we're just going to get all the way around. And the kind of the cool part about HSL is if you go over 360, it's just going to like if we if we pop it into here and see what hue is at. Hue is 906, but it just kind of like keep going around and around and around. What we could also do is say if hue is greater or equal to 360, then hue is equal to zero and just sort of like reset it at that point and that will work just as well and then the other thing that we can do is we can also change the line width of what we've done right here ctx.line width but we can use that variable as well so stroke style and ctx dot line width is going to be equal to hue let's see what we got there so it starts Ooh, goes all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. And then at a certain point, it just starts over again. Um, and that's kind of cool. But what I've done here is once you hit that maximum draw, it will just sort of fade itself back. So what we can do is create another variable here called let direction equals true. And that means it's going to be building up. So we have let direction equals true. Now we have this line width equals hue. We don't want this. Delete that line and head down to the bottom below where we do our hue stuff. And we are going to, for every loop, we are going to increment the line width. So it's a ctx dot line width plus plus. And what that will do is it will increment the line width once for every single time they have. So, so going bigger, 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 and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger infinitely. And that's really not what we want. So what we can say is we'll say if ctx dot line width is greater or equal to 100 or ctx dot line width is less or equal to 1 then we want to flip the direction so 
And then we say down here, if direction is equal to true, then the line width goes up. Otherwise, the line width goes down. Now, that might have broken your brain for a second. So let's take a second to see what's going on here. If CTX line width is greater than 100. So essentially what we're doing right here is we're incrementing it from 0 all the way to 100. But then once we hit 100, we're going to go from 100 to 99 to 98 all the way down. So we're saying if it's greater than 100, then flip the direction. Or if it's less than 1, also flip the direction. And then depending on what that direction is, we either increment the line width or if the direction is going in the other way, we decrement the line width by one. So let's see what's going on here. Draw, draw, draw. And it's going smaller, bigger, 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 smaller, 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 bigger, bigger, bigger. And you can play with these values as well. You could do it something like 500 where it gets super big. And then it will slowly bring itself down once we get to 500. And there we go. It's bringing itself down to be much smaller. You can play with it exactly. One other thing we can do is play with the um, something called global composite operator. And if you've worked with Photoshop blend modes, you can use blend modes inside of context. So say context.global composite operator equals multiply. And this is kind of cool where when you draw on it, let me refresh this here, they will sort of blend each other as you draw over top of each other. Eventually, everything is just going to be black. But uh, you can play with the different blend modes that we have here, the subtract and lighten and all that good stuff. So just go and look up global composite operator on Google. You can take a look at the different types that we have here. They've got a nice source over, source in, source out, source atop, destination over. You just play with all of them, and you can kind of get an idea for how are they actually working. So that is today's exercise. We had fun with Canvas. We understood a couple things about events and when events happen. We understand this uh, flag thing where you set it to is drawing and tr is true and is drawing equal to false. That's sort of a common thing that we do a lot in JavaScript where you have a flag where you want to test if it's true or not. And then when you move the mouse, we use the event information to draw onto our Canvas context. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I'll see you in the next one.